So if I measure with my own meter, if I measure a transformer, what's the resistance going to be? Is it going to be very low? Is it going to be very high? On the, on the, of a transformer. Right on the primary. Don't make any difference. Is it going to be very low or very high? Okay, so a transformer is nothing but wire wound in coils. How much resistance does wire have? Real low. Very low. Mm -hmm. Now y'all understand that. So then y'all measure, uh, wasn't that part of y'all's lab is to measure the resistance of that transformer? Okay. What did you get? Hopefully it wasn't infinite. It was infinite when you went from like X when you went right from X one to X three because you was on two different coils. When you went to X one to X two, it was very low. When you went from X three to X four, it was very low. When you went from X L to X uh, X two, it was very low because all you're doing is measuring the resistance of a wire. And what determines the resistance of a wire? The length, the size, which we call the gauge, and the temperature. Okay, those are the three things that determine the resistance of a wire. And we've left out one very important, it's the material it's made out of. Okay. And of course, our two primary conductors are copper or copper alloys. We do a lot of copper alloys because copper oxidizes a lot. So this is why a lot of times in these small little wires that you hook, hook up stuff on your trainer, they'll they'll have a silk, they'll look like silver, but they're not, they're a copper alloy. Okay. So uh, what we're gonna do, if I wanna check the short circuit, if I left my transformer hooked up, it would look like a short all the time. It might measure two, three, four ohms, right? It's gonna measure something because there's a lot of wire in there. Uh, but since this is a step down transformer, uh, your primary will measure more than your secondary because it's more turn than your primary, right? Even if we do a divide by two. Uh, divide by four, your primary would measure twice what it normally would to just measure across this one and four. So I should get in, I should get an infinite resistance uh, if I don't have a if I don't have it set up, I should get an infinite resistance between X1. And X3, and of course, uh, X3 and X2, right? Or, or vice versa. And once we jump it out, though, then, you know, we're going to be measuring a little bit. But when it says apply power, what does that mean? That means you got to have that X2 connected up. Everybody understand that. It don't tell you to do it in the lab, but when it says down here in step six, when it says what? then the circuit is supposed to be connected. What did it tell you to do? It didn't tell you to connect X2. It did on step five okay, but what, I'm sorry. But it's not gonna tell you that every time. So when you get me, when you get me to come back and check this off, you say, okay, I'm ready to apply power, then what you need to do is everything needs to be what? Connect. By the way, uh, and we got tags, so when you're building your when you're building your circuit, what do you need to do? You need to tag out, right? You understand? Uh, I lock out, you tag out. But once your circuit's built, then the tag comes off because the circuit is operational. Uh, that would be like me coming into a plant and everything's tagged out because that was, we turned it off the day before. So just because it's turned off, don't mean you got to do what tag it. Everybody understand that? When do you have to tag it? When you're working on it, right? When you're actually building the circuit or when you're in there uh, uh, modifying the circuit. So this is our lab. How are these connected? Is this and or or? Yeah, this is and, right? You understand and. that? So you're going to build this circuit. Uh, how many runs do we have? One. So what would I put over on the left hand side? One, right? Uh, how many contacts do we have? How many contacts do we have? How many contacts do we have? None. Contacts are for relays. They're not push buttons. We don't call push buttons contacts. Contacts are, are switches that are controlled by a relay or a sensor. Y'all understand that? So those are not contacts. They're just push buttons. Uh, 
you know, momentary contact push button. So what we'll do, of course, is we'll use uh, one of our push button stations. Now those were normally closed. They would be closed. No, if they're normally closed, they'd be manned. Okay. So ands, ands and ors are what's required to turn the light on. Nans, nors, and nots is what's required to turn the light off. Okay? Y'all want to see? Huh? So this would be a, what did I say? This would be a nor. I said a nan, but this would be a nor. If they were normally closed. <clears throat> so they're just off. So it's not a hand. This isn't a hand. Okay. If you didn't hear the question Charles asked, Charles asked if you tell you yeah, they're normally closed, that. push button. So either one of them is stopped. So. Yeah, it's like any. And that's why if you, if you use the term any, then it's going to be either a what? It's going to be a, it's going to be an or or an or. If we use the term all, then it's going to be an and or a man. And if it's a single only close push button, it's going to be a not. Okay, everybody okay? So that's what I like to use. I say, okay, all these push buttons have to be pressed. How many? How many do we need to get an and? Both. All. Now, how many push buttons are there? More than one. More than one. Everybody understand that? A minimum of two. So what would one push button do? What type of logic would one push button do? One push button. Normally, no, no, normally open push button. What like? It don't do lock. It wouldn't do lock. Yeah. You got one push button. It does something in live, but it don't do logic. Uh, in digital, we'll learn it as a buffer. <laughs> now then, it's not. If it's only one of them, if it's two of them, it's, it's not a not, right? And that's where you get confused because we use two terms. So normally when we deal with logic, we, we spell the names in all uppercase letters. So I would spell and with all uppercase letters, and that would tell me that's logic. If I spell and with lowercase letters, it means it's the word and. Everybody understand that? And that's just normal uh, industry standard. Uh, so then we're going to come back and wire this. And of course, I show it disconnected. But what they're going to do here is they're going to tell you to put that back on there. But later on, I guarantee you, they're not going to tell you to put that X2 back on there. They take for granted what? That you already know it. Everybody okay? Any questions there? So what logic is this? Uh, how many rungs do we have? Yes, well, how many rungs do we have? One rung. One rung. How many lines? Two. two lines. So over here you'd have what? One and two. How many contacts do we have? None. None. So we're not doing relays yet. All we're trying to do is just figure out the logic, right? Well, you're not calling it first. What Q do? No, this is this is L one. This is L two. Oh. So L1 and L2 are not assigned line numbers, Jerry. The only thing that's assigned line numbers are lines that are within a rung. That makes sense. Are we okay? It's stopping the US field, John. It's got switches up there and it looks like there's extra lines up there that's not like that. And the US steel drawing? Yeah. Well, the, what they do on the, this goes into to be great. The US steel drawing uh, is a hat shows the disconnect. Well, that's that's what they're saying. They're saying that could be in there or not be in there is what they're saying. If you read, if you was to look at it, so what they're saying is that some people don't use a disconnect, some people do. When I saw it, I said, well, that's, that's, short. that's what they said. It might. Well, it's not a it's not a short. It would be a, a what. What it's not a short mean? circuit, it would be shorted out. It's two different things. Okay. Kind of misleading. Uh, what's the next lab y'all do? Y'all do the what? Not, not nans and doors, right? Yeah. 
And then, of course, it gives you a good discussion. It explains the knot, explains the uh, explains the knot, and it explains the name. And then you're going to do what? Then you're going to connect the circuits up. Uh, so there's any questions on so far? So figure 14, you'll connect this circuit up. Uh, figure 14, you'll connect this circuit up. Uh, figure 15, you'll connect this circuit up. And then you're through with that light. And then we're not going to do the experiment on the logic relay, so we'll jump over that. But that should be enough for today. Is there any questions on the lab? On the lab procedures? When you look over the lab procedures, now is the time to ask. By the way, when I come back there, I'm going to say, okay, what logic does this do? And you better know the logic that it does, right? You understand that? You need to know what your circuit does. Uh, one of the first steps of troubleshooting is what? Knowing what, it's supposed to do. knowing what it's supposed to do. If you don't know what it's supposed to do, then you don't know it's bad, right? Y'all understand that? So you need to understand this circuit. So if y'all got any questions about these circuits now, what do you need to do? Ask you need to ask them now. Because when I come back there, I'm the one that's going to be asking the questions, right? So y'all understand that. So y'all look at these labs over real quick. We're fixing to go to labs. Which one? Are we, we're going to do all of them up to 14. We have the ability to do all up to 14. But no one wanted to do all the way up to the only logic graph. We're yeah, we're not. Y'all won't be able to get through with these today. We'll we'll go over a group of labs. We don't have a lab schedule in this class. You turn them in when you're through. So I don't say these labs are due today. You'll never hear me say that. Because what I found out is some people do, some people, how can I explain this? Different people run at different pace on different labs. Okay. So what you're shooting for is you're trying to do what? How do I grade you? Fair enough. And what's the I, I grade you on quality and quantity, so you need to do the labs as fast as you can. And what we usually do is we scale the labs by two two labs. So what that means is if you if you're absent and you miss out on a lab, uh, then it won't hurt you. If you're absent a lot though, and you miss out on a lot of labs, then that's gonna that's gonna be a problem. So any questions? Yes or no? So right now we have the ability to go through. Uh, some of y'all are still working on your power supply labs. Uh, is anybody working on station three? No. Okay. So y'all need to make sure if you don't have a module connected, you need to make sure those are down at the on the bottom of the table, right? You understand that? Any questions on the lab procedures? Yes or no? What about that meter? Uh-huh. What about it? Yeah, you can use it. I, I told you that when you were standing up here. You might not have heard me, but I said it's okay to use it. Well, yeah, okay. I, I heard that part, but I just want to verify what happened. No, you're not screwing up. That made us fine. It's not a class. It was put out before the classes came out. I got two of them. So, any more questions? Was you working with the team? Jane, was you already working with somebody? Kelton, you're working, you're working on, right? Uh, James will probably pick. You're not, you don't have a partner yet, right? On your lab? Okay, so James will work with you. Are we okay? Questions, now's the time to ask. We need to go to lab, guys. Okay, guys, let's go to lab. Thank <laughs> you.